quantum mechanics. Do you two know how scientists identify the substances in distant stars? Do you know how we measure the composition of the sun, for example? Sure. One major tool is spectral analysis, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I am familiar with the results of spectral analysis, but I am a bit unsure of how the spectra arise to begin with. Chaucer, is that part of our material for today? Yes, it is, Diana. In fact, it is the starting point. Let's use Professor Peabody's Wayback Machine, since we don't have one of our own, and look at a little science history. Jeeves? Traveling to the 1750s, we find that scientists were putting different substances in flames and passing the resultant light through a prism. They found that the hot gases given off by the burning materials emit different colors of light or spectra. For example, ordinary table salt generated a bright yellow spectra. Furthermore, not all the colors of the rainbow appeared. There were dark gaps in the spectrum. In fact, for some materials, there were just a few patches of light. By the 1820s, they recognized that spectra provided an excellent way to detect and identify small quantities of an element in a powder that was put into a flame. Meanwhile, the white light of the sun was also being examined closely. And, in 1802, it was discovered that the solar spectrum itself had tiny gaps. There were many thin, dark lines in the rainbow of colors. But the reason for spectral lines in the light and the relationship to each substance was a real mystery. Traveling forward from that era to a little over a hundred years ago, Scientists were examining the colors of light given off by solid heated objects. They discovered that these hot solids gave off continuous spectra and that the overall color of the light revealed the temperature of the object. Now this was important because scientists realized that this discovery made it possible to measure the temperature of an object from a distance. They could measure the temperature of the sun, for instance. During these discoveries, they also noticed that some of the objects absorbed light extremely well, almost perfectly in fact. They were called black bodies because they absorbed virtually all the light that was shown upon their surfaces. These same objects also radiated almost perfectly, and as noted before, the temperature of the black body object determined the distribution of colors or wavelengths in the emitted light. This curve shows how much light of each color is admitted by a cool object. As you can see, there isn't much light, and what light there is mostly lies out past the red end of the spectrum, in the infrared. The figure on the right will show the different colors added together as we progress. Right now, only red light is visible. This curve shows how much light of each color is emitted by a medium temperature object. And the most light is emitted in the orange, yellow, green wavelengths. So now we add orange, yellow, and green to our cauldron of light on the right. As you can see, the combination so far looks yellow. This third curve is for a really hot object lots of light, and with most of it being emitted toward the blue end of the spectrum. And as you can see, our cauldron now is pure white in the center where all the colors overlap. A heated black body follows this color path as the temperature rises. A good example of black body radiation is the heat inside a kiln. Inside the kiln, electromagnetic radiation, light and heat, exist in a form of standing waves. Waves that, like the vibration of a guitar string, are attached at both ends. 
the ends of the standing waves, like the ends of a guitar string, do not move. They are anchored to the sides of the kiln. And many, many waves exist with varying wavelengths of color. At low temperatures, the primary color inside the kiln is the infrared. And we cannot detect it with our naked eye. But as the temperature rises, the kiln begins to glow red. And as the temperature continues to rise, the dominant color changes to orange, then yellow, then bluish white. The distribution of energy in light shifts to shorter wavelengths as the temperature rises.